morning, everybody, and oh, welcome back to another exciting episode of The Blu-ray Hunter. I'm The Blu-ray Hunter, Jonathan Moody, and I've got another fun one for you. So if you guys liked my uh, my little video on the uh, ranking all my, uh, was it seven? I think it was seven movies that were non-Criterion films. Well, here you go. We're going to be ranking my nine Criterion films. I have more for you guys. So, of course, we had to save that for... We had to save that for... Uh, what is it? Um, <clears throat> uh, Friday. So, first up is uh, is a movie that uh, I had not seen, but it, was, it wasn't it was something I bought. So, this is, I think, the only one that I watched that I had not bought yet. And it's a film that I was dying to watch and I knew I was going to be trying to watch as many uh, Criterion films as I could while this whole sale was going on so the first one up is Scanners and this is my least favorite of the groups now a lot of, a lot of you may put Scanners high up in your you know catalog of films and everything and that's fantastic I liked it I thought it was great. This would be like, I, I think this would be either three or three and a half for me. Stars, you know, star wise. I think it was, it was a good movie, you know? Um, obviously the biggest scene is the scene that I've seen in, you know, countless uh, little videos and stuff with the, the head exploding. Um, when that happened, I was like, cool. Yeah. I get to see it like actually in the film after that, you know, it was, it it became like more like a B movie. It felt honestly, it felt more like uh there's a movie that, that Full Moon did called Trancers. It felt very much like that and like maybe like with more money. You know, like if Charles Band had more money to make Trancers, he would make Scanners, you know. And love Scanners and I love David uh Cronenberg, but um just honestly, it was, you know, um just, it was it was good. It was good. It was a good movie. That's all I can say. It was good. All right. So this would be a little better of a movie, I think. And it's still one of my my least favorite of the ones I watched, which is Paris, Texas. Uh, I'm a really big Vin Vendors fan now. Like I, I watched uh, um, the Angel one, um, Wings of Desire. And I absolutely love that. Like, I thought Wings of Desire was amazing. Paris, Texas was good. It had some great performances. I'm not going to lie. Um, I was very surprised about the cast and everything. But all in all, I, I felt like it was over long. The dialogue sometimes kept going. And I, I, like, I felt like they needed to chop it up a little bit uh, in the script-wise. But... Um, I mean, I feel like sometimes that's how directors are, where they're able to get away with a lot more stuff. Um, and I know a lot of this, like, I know the people who ended up working on, um, uh, was it, was the one I really liked? Um, uh, the one in New Mexico or something. Um, anyway, don't know what I'm saying with that. Uh, people who worked on that movie worked on this, and um, it was uh, Gas Food Lodging, and worked on this, uh, Allison Anders. And I think they did like uh, they were PAs or something on this movie, and and it it was a good movie, like it was damn good. It was in you know, um, but it wasn't my favorite, you know, of all the movies I've watched, um. It, it was it was good. It was good. I, I just, I think, like I said, I felt like some of the scenes just went a little long, the dialogue. Just like I am. All right, moving on. Next is Lady Snowblood. Um, Paul did this for uh, indie, uh, for Criteria Watch uh, with Joe uh, Turek. And I was so jealous because I wasn't able to, to be there to watch it with them. I was in California at the time. That was when we were doing things separately and uh, I didn't get a chance to watch this. So I bought it and I watched it, I think like the same day. And I was like blown away by this movie. This movie was so good. 
you could see a lot of Kill Bill in it because Kill Bill was inspired by this movie. You could tell. Um, it was just wonderful. Great movie, great performances. Uh, I I loved watching Joe and Paul talk about this movie after because Paul knew so much about it. I mean, there's there's a couple interviews and stuff. I watched some of the interviews and it, it was okay, but I like I wish there were more special features. Uh, Paul did say because there is a sequel to it that maybe me, him, and Joe will do do the sequel at some point. But he'll he'll be in charge of that, you know, when we do it. So I love it. It was great. Um, I had a blast. Um, I I realized I kind of like that kind of style of like, you know, um, that's I don't I don't know it's not samurai, but like uh, vengeance kind of things. So. All right, next is a really, really good movie that I just was surprised about. Also, another one that Quentin Tarantino liked, uh, which is Friends of Eddie Coyle. And I say he liked it because there's a character named Jackie Brown in this movie. And in the book Rum Punch, that um, uh, that is that that is what became Jackie Brown. Elmore Leonard called the person like Jackie Burke, not Jackie Brown, and he changed the name to Jackie Brown. So it, you know, was sort of this. I think that was his homage to this movie and everything. And you could tell it's a very Tarantino style and and before Tarantino. So Tarantino probably got some great ideas from like this kind of movie. And it's a you know it's basically about this. Older gentleman, uh, Eddie Coyle, played by um, what's the guy's name? Robert Mitchum. Robert Mitchum in his older age, and he's, uh, you know, he's sort of like hands off on this group of people, but he kind of he kind of helps, you know, f- facilitate things, and then he's sort of turning on, uh, on the people, but. They're also getting turned on by you know, turned over by somebody else, and there's other stuff that goes on, and it's just it's a good sort of mob movie, you know, kind of crime drama. I think if you're into that kind of style and you're into like a Tarantino type movie, this would be your your thing. Or Scorsese, you know, if if you could combine Tarantino and Scorsese, I think you'd get this movie. Next is a movie that. Isn't Hitchcock, but should have been Hitchcock, and I absolutely adored and was blown away by it, and it is Charade. Um, wow. Okay, first of all, I had looked up Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn. Have they ever been in a movie together? And this pops up, and I thought that was loose. Um, and this pops up, and wow. They were so good. Their dialogue together was hilarious. Um Screenplay by Peter Stone did such a fantastic job. Uh, it has got an uh, audio commentary by the director Stanley Donan and uh, screenwriter Peter Stone. So if you Donan or Donan, I can't. I'm I'm gonna say Donan. Um. So yeah, they do a commentary on this. I mean, this cri- cri- uh, Criterion release is amazing, and if you haven't seen this movie, it is. Phenomenal. The like I said, the dialogue between Audrey and Carrie is so funny. Um, after a while, you it, it almost it just feels like a comedy at times, and it, it's got a lot of comedy, but it's it's really just a uh, a crime, like you know, wrong man, um, crime drama, you know. And it's really funny because he had done a movie with uh, Hitchcock, and I'm not sure if this was before. Or, or after, I'm gonna guess after. But he had done a movie with Hitchcock and Grace Kelly called To Catch a Thief. And this sort of remind, reminded me of that. I think he was starting to get up to the point where he didn't even buy himself um, and buy himself, not as being by himself, but he didn't buy himself being a, uh, you know, womanizer at that point and his older age, you know, and stuff. So, but. 
he did such a fantastic job. Like I bought it. I like I loved it. I thought it was great. The whole movie, I was just wanting to know what was gonna happen. And I had a, I had a feeling about the ending. Like I had a feeling about something in the ending, but it's still at after after you didn't know the complete ending at all. You didn't see any of it coming. I I didn't at least. Maybe if you've watched enough of these, you can you can definitely tell. But I I absolutely thought this was just great and fantastic. And maybe I'll listen to the commentary sometime soon. So. All right, we're down to the last four here. So, did one, two, three, four, five, five. Okay, so the last four. Um, this movie, I just absolutely loved. Um, thought it was so, so good. Um, I, I absolutely loved everybody in it, and uh, and and just loved the movie. And that is, defending your life, defending your life. If you haven't seen this movie, ah. It's fantastic. Albert Brooks, Meryl Streep. I mean, just them alone is wonderful. But then it's got um, Rip Torn, <laughs> Buck Henry, Lee Grant. I mean, how amazing, you know, how amazing is this movie? This movie is so funny and so original. You know, this is an original take on dying, you know, and I even listened to the, I watched like the behind the scenes and Albert Brooks is talking about how, he, in an interview, he was talking about how when he was trying to come up with it, he was just getting sort of tired of like, <clears throat> you know, you you die and you just go to heaven, you know, and all this other stuff. Like he wanted it to be original and different, and and mix different beliefs, sort of thing, you know. And maybe this is what, you know, maybe this is what happens. You go to Judgment City, and then you have to claim your peace and you get to try again you know like reincarnation where you get to to move on you know i mean maybe I, i'm not gonna say you know i don't have an idea what heaven is like or if there even is one i just say i think there is one i'm pretty sure there's one because you know i like to believe that um i might might be wrong um but i like to believe that it makes me feel better inside um so there you go. So Defending Your Life, great movie, fantastic. Oh, it's just a fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. I think you'll I think you'll get a kick out of it. It's it's funny and heartwarming and it's got all all of those. So another movie about heaven, you know, or 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 dying, you know, whatnot is Here Comes Mr. Jordan. Now Here Comes Mr. Jordan was later done as like Heaven Can Wait. And all these other movies is based on the book, I think, Heaven Can Wait. Um, or at least that's Heaven Can Wait, yeah, from the play. Heaven Can Wait by Harry Siegel. Um, but it, it it's its own like thing, and I really, really enjoyed this. I thought this was so funny. And it was it was adorable. It was it was great. It just made my day. This is this is a movie, I swear to God, a movie that I could watch. If I am just in a really bad mood and just want something to pick me up, this is that movie. Um, so basically, in the in the movie, there's a guy. He's a boxer. He dies, goes in a plane crash, gets picked up, brought to heaven, and he's so confused. Why am I here? What's going on? And they say, "Uh oh, we made a mistake. You weren't supposed to die. So what we can do is we can't bring you back to your body because it's been cremated." You know, so bad people who cremate themselves might not be able to get back into their bodies. Don't do that yet. You know, though it would be sort of, oh, man, I would love to see that thing where he comes back to life from like, uh, you know, from the grave or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, he, um, or, or at the funeral, could you imagine if he just woke up? He's like, hey, what's going on here? You know, let me out. <laughs> But uh, so his body gets cremated, so they have to figure out where else to put him. And uh, they put him in this other guy's body who is sort of an, an asshole kind of character. And this guy's a nice guy, so he sort of redeems that character for a while. But the people who murdered that person are out to get him. So it, it just it gets interesting. It's really good. I I absolutely loved it. Um, 
uh, it it goes to the idea that even angels can make mistakes. That's the idea, you know, or whatever in the movie. And um, nobody's perfect. And, uh, you know, it was just so well done and it was so funny. And I laughed my butt off and I loved it. And something I, I'm going to, I'm definitely putting that on my list for Criterion Watch because I need to talk about it more. Another movie is going to be on the list of Criterion Watch. I, actually, the next two will be. So just get ready because a lot of these are going to be on Criterion Watch at some point on Indie Film Cafe. So get ready for that. Chilliest Scenes of Winter, a movie I did not know anything about. Um, I, I, I don't think I even knew that John Hurd was in this until I read the back of it later. I didn't know anything about this. Like, I didn't watch any previews. I didn't know anything. Um, even the back was very... It didn't tell me enough. you know. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. I go home after buying it. Go home to watch it. I put it on. And I'm like, what the fuck is this movie? Like, this movie blew me away. Now, everybody keeps saying, like, there's a... Um, uh, there's a original ending of the film that was cut by the director for its re-release in 1982. So there's an alternate ending that you can watch. I haven't seen it yet, but I like the original because I can. It, it, it ends on the, like a human note, you know. I feel like the 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 other one might end on a a happier note, you know, or whatever, a happy Hollywood note. And and you know whatever that's that's cool but I liked I liked how it ended, I sort of was happy with it you know I didn't think I would I kind of was hoping for the Hollywood thing but then when it happened I was like this sort of fits for this movie, so it it was great. Uh, John Hurd is incredible, uh, gives an amazing performance. Um, uh, who else is in it? Um, Mary Beth Hurt. She did an amazing job. Kenneth Mc, Mc, uh, McMillan, Gloria Graham, who was on uh, Criterion Watches where we did uh, in, in a Lonely Place. And she was phenomenal in that movie. And she's just as phenomenal on this as the mother. She's so funny. Um, I adored her. Um, yeah, and it was a uh, screenplay and directed by Joan Micklin Silver. Uh, Silver. It was also produced by Mark Metcalf, Amy Robinson, and Griffin Dunn for their company, Triple Play. Um, and uh, was put out by like United Artists and MGM. Just phenomenal. Just If you haven't seen this movie, go check it out. It's definitely worth uh, an another pickup. Like because it's newer in the criteria and I wasn't sure how it was going to be, but it's oh, so good. It is definitely worth it. Um, there you go. And last but not least, kind of goes with uh, Doctor Strange Love, and it is fail safe because these movies were both put out by Sony or Columbia, Columbia Pictures, and released at the same like same year. Uh, Doctor Strange Love went first because Stanley Kubrick asked him to go first, and then everybody sort of laughed at this one, and this didn't do as well as the other one. But this is another Sidney Lumet movie, and it is fan freaking tastic. It is exactly what Doctor Strange Love was if it weren't a black comedy. You know, this was more serious approach to it. Henry Fonda, who is Great in 12 Angry Men was just as great in this movie. I mean, so many great things in this. Like, it, it's phenomenal. It is a movie that I just realized I'm just, like, I just, I'm blown away by it. So, um, anywho, I, I, if you haven't seen this movie, I bought it because, uh, I'd seen, a, I've seen a couple people own it and I'd wanted to, like, check it out. I didn't know much about it. I, I really didn't even know it was during the Cold War when I first watched it. But I watched this first before watching Dr. Strangelove. And I'm glad I did, actually. I wish more people had seen this one first. Then they can laugh later 
But I feel like this now all of a sudden people aren't going to take this seriously because Doctor Strange lives sort of made fun of it. But it's very, very good. Uh, very paranoid, you know. That's even a phrase or word. It is now. Um, I just absolutely love this movie. Um, and I, this is my number one. My number one movie. So let me go back. So number one, fail safe. Number two, chilly scenes of winter. Number three, here comes Mr. Jordan. Number four, defending her, defending your life. Number five, charade. Number six, friends of Eddie Coyle. Number seven, Lady Snowblood. I haven't seen the second one yet. Next, number eight is Paris, Texas. And number nine is Scanners. So there you go. That is that is all of them. Ah. That's just great. See, I'm trying to I'm trying to do what everybody else does, and I'm not very good at it. So get get ready for that. Ugh. There you go. That's a lot of movies. It's more than the other one. I think that's upside down. That's okay. There you go. So, that's a great collection of movies. Uh, no 4K. I didn't watch any 4Ks, did I? No, the, uh, I have to watch the 4Ks on the next uh, month. So August is rolling around. I think I'm going to have more movies I'm going to watch. I'm going to try to watch more movies. So I will watch more Criterion. And if you liked how I split it up and everything, please let me know because I think this would have been a longer video had I done all of them. And I don't know. I, I kind of like doing just, you know, ranking just my Criterion because I think I watch more of those now because I have so many I need to catch up on and everything. And I keep buying more. So I need to watch the ones I haven't seen yet and stuff or, or even have seen. But um. Like, I mean, I, I I don't know what. Those are all our ones I hadn't seen yet. Except for Defending Your Life. I'd seen that before. And I liked it a lot. But that's why I bought it, too. And that's the funny thing. Is most of these are blind buys. I don't know anything about them, whether or not I'm going to like them or not. And I actually prefer to do my Criterions by buy blind buys because I have no idea what I'm going to get. Sometimes I get something great. Sometimes they're, like, okay. Um, like, I'm like, why is this in the criterion? But, uh, each one does serve a purpose. You know, there is a reason why these movies are in the criterion collection, you know, and everything. So there you go. Um, so next month in August, I'll have more movies that I, and I'm only going to show the ones like if I do like criteria watch, I don't have that movie with me. I'm only going to show the ones I actually have the, the physical copy of. So there, you'll see. Like, And there might be even some movies I've already seen that I have in my collection. You know, that maybe I just felt like watching or reviewing or something. So there you go. That's my ranking. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, join me next month for a brand new ranking video if if you like this like if this is not something you guys enjoy to, watching let me know also because uh i would like to like to know what you guys are more into um but i do enjoy these rankings so with that being said have a good one and i will talk to you guys next week bye